Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16, where it is written, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power are done in you, have been done in Tyre and Sidon, that had repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But at the judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you'll be brought down to Hades. For whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. Whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus is referring to cities that he did many miracles in. Clear evidence of his divine authority. And he taught there. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you. And what did they do? Thanks to the miracles. Bye. Back to the way we were before. And Jesus is honest. You're not in a good place. You're going to regret this. Mm, but here's the scary part. Jesus Christ, when he entered the world, when God became a man, he wanted the entire planet to change. And change radically. To the, to the Sermon on the Mount, that's what he wanted for the whole world. There's been some progress since the days of the Roman Empire. But by and large, I look at the kingdom of God the Lord preached. I look at the Roman Empire. Which one are we closer to in our world today? Or even the last few decades? By the 80s, I mean. There was a time when people of both Republicans and Democrats would do things socially with each other. Even people in Congress, if they clocked out, they go out to the bar and restaurants together. Can you imagine that happening now? I can't. So in a very real sense, is not Jesus Christ among us? Were we not baptized into him? Do we not hear him preach? Yeah. So what are we doing in our life? <laughs> are we scared yet? Look, it's not all a one-way street. What way the world's going, I can't say, other than to say at some point Jesus Christ will return and make all things right. We don't have control over the entire world. What we do control, though, is what we do with our own life. We ourselves can repent. We ourselves can turn to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. Come here and say, Jesus, forgive me. And he's got you. The beautiful thing about forgiveness, it's not just legal pardon. It is a pardon, of course, but it's inside-out transformation. The entire crooked way of life you were living, you get rehabbed and can leave that behind to a new life that Jesus gives you, which I will admit not be finished during your earthly life, but at least it will start here. Things will you'll be in a better spot at the end than you were at the beginning, put it that way. And so... When the Lord returns at the judgment, we, by his grace, will hear the words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant, and not get away from me. Not woe to you. And for that to happen, it can't just be a Sunday cultural thing. We must truly have the love of Christ in our hearts. We must truly ask to be forgiven. We must truly ask God to guide us. And so it's not just a woo-woo that's why our faith is real and solid. That's why we come here and get baptized. The water is real. That's why we come here and do confession and absolution. I'm a real human being here. I'm confessing too. That's why Jesus Christ comes to us in his flesh and blood, which we can see, taste, and touch. It's not woo-woo here. It's real. And we must stay in these sacraments to stay with the Lord. And so hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. So stay here. I know you're in the right place. Let us close in prayer. Lord, help us continue to repent, continue to follow you, and continue to always, Lord, to be with you until the end. Amen.